Joining me is Canadian singer-songwriter Mary Garnett Edwards, who's here today to talk about her passion for music, her debut album, White Lightning, and what is next for her. Welcome, Mary. Thank you for having me. I, I am so happy to be here today. Yes, and I understand your passion for music began when you wrote your first song at the age of 10? Yeah, well, my passion actually started when I was really little at, at around five and six, I was singing. And I'd sit in the back of the car. We had a big family and we'd have to scrunch into the back all these kids. And I'd get bored and I'd also get car sick. Oh. And so to distract myself, I would um, sing to Bobby Vincent, Blue Velvet. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, and I sing it real darn good, too. And my mom would say, gee, Mary, you have a good singing voice. So that started me, because when you get a little bit of attention for something that you do good, you want to keep doing it, you know? That's how you get noticed in a big family. <laughs> wow. When you say a big family, like how many? Uh... We had seven. Wow, seven. So Yes, I was the second youngest of seven. My goodness. And like so do you come from a family of musicians? Um, well, my dad actually sang in a choir when he was young. Mm -hmm. And I think my mother had a good tone to her speaking voice and sort of a good singing voice too, I think. So I, I think it's something that you kind of inherit or can. Um, mine was more, I just like to sing. Mm. So I think that, you know, it wasn't something that's trained like young people learning to play piano or something. And I started to play guitar by the time I was 10 and 11. Wow. So... Um, I just do little chords and I would write songs. Well, it's wonderful. And your first performance, what was that like? One of the first places I ever did play was I was uh, 10 or 11. And I played on um, the an Edmonton show. Um, it was like something popcorn playhouse or yes. something like that. So I was on that in Edmonton, and then from there, I went to the Barricade Coffee House because I was doing folk songs, mm. yeah. you know, so I started uh, doing folk songs at the Barricade Coffee House, and then once I moved out to Vancouver, I started doing whatever little uh, folk house gigs I could find. Um, open open uh, mic nights, you know, get in there and put your name and wait for hearing everybody else and then now it's your turn and I would get up and I'd play three or four songs and get down and go home. Um, so yeah, and then I started playing in rock bands mm -hmm. and uh, I did a little bit of metal when I was young, you know, when I was 19 and 20, but uh, I found it really, the metal would really uh, make my voice soar. So I dropped out of metal and I thought, well, you know, what's my statement here? Is it, is it a positive statement? Am I, what am, what's, you know, what's good about it? So I went back to poetry. Mm. I really liked to be able to sing songs that had a bit of a story or mm -hmm. a feeling to it. So I wrote a lot of the songs on my CD when I was young, you yes. know, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Wow, yeah. what a gift. And I mean, do you remember your first song that you wrote? Um, I think it was a little protest song. Hmm. Um, uh, I think it was called 1967. And <laughs> um, it was just a little prote protest song because... Yeah, you know, people were uh, protesting the Vietnam War, mm. and that made an impression on the news. So I wrote a little protest song about it, wow. and that was my first song. Yeah, so so you, you originally from Edmonton, you moved to Vancouver, and you developed like your singing and songwriting career. And but when was that? moment that you knew, hey, I'm I'm on the road to success. 
Um, I never was on the road to success. I had sometimes what was too big of a vocal. I'm very loud when I sing. And uh, I, I think that um, people loved my voice, but I always got shelved. So anytime that I would apply for a record company or send my music out, I never got picked up. My husband made Garnet Edwards for me, mm. first stone. And uh, that didn't get picked up either. And, and he, quite frankly, was really shocked about that because he said, gee, I can't believe that people wouldn't hear your voice and just automatically love a voice like that. Like, I don't know, Mary, I don't know what to say. I'm very sorry. So we dropped the music thing and I just went into taking care of our home. My husband was an avid touring musician mm -hmm. and he was one of Canada's most most uh, recorded uh, players in Vancouver in the studio for commercials and mm. all kinds of, you know, studio gigs. And he played in the band Chilliwack for 17 years as yes. a bass player. He wrote the song music for the song Wildflower, yes. <laughs> which is one of Canada's most recorded songs. Yes. Um, so, but he couldn't understand it. And so I just said, well, I'm not, I'm not, you know, worried about it. I'm not like a fame monger. I'm not going to fight to get this out right now. I'm just going to work on my husband's health, which at that time really started to deteriorate. Mm. And um, he started getting um, different um, um, operations. And yes. it was hard on us, actually, very hard on us. And then we discovered he had cancer, and then he died of cancer in 2016 on November 11th, on a mm. day when he had a gig booked. Oh. He was booked at the Legion on Lonsdale and 3rd and uh, with Lee Morin. And uh, on that day, all these guys, they figured out that he passed away that that in the middle of the night on that day and uh they said well we'll go in and still for doug so all these guys showed up at the legion so it was kind of weird for me that day my heart was really broken but i got to sit with them all night by myself oh. and um I phoned up some of his best friends to come and sit with him and be with his body at the last moment, which mm -hmm. happened. And then after they came to to get Doug's body, uh, that was very hard for me. Our dog kept uh, going back into the house and jumping up on the bed. They wouldn't let him him leave with the um, corner and uh, so I'd have to run in the house and get the dog out of the house because the dog was jumping up on the bed mm -hmm. and saying don't touch daddy don't touch daddy so it was a really hard day but he had that gig and Lee Morin said well Mary I've got to go over and set up for the gig you know, it starts at noon, 12 noon today, because it's Remembrance Day. Yes. It was our gig. We always played. And uh, so he said, come over there. Get out of the house and come over there. And I said, oh, I don't think I can. He said, Mary, come to Doug's gig. He always came to Doug's gig. So I went over to Doug's gig, and all his friends showed up, and they played. They took turns playing. And I just sat there and... I wet my face off. Oh. I wet my face off. I. It was a good release, actually, that I went there. It was a wonderful time to hear everybody play old rock and roll from the 1960s and yes. sit there and have a beer. So... But, you know, Mary, I'm sorry for your loss. And, you know, you're carrying the torch. So you're keep, you're, you know, you, you have a, a, a lifelong interest in music and performing and, and, you know, you know, who records their debut album, you know, right now, like, you know, you know, well, tell at us. 63, yes. too, at 63, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I just, you know, I thought, there, get in there and do the best you can. My husband, when he was passing away, he said to me, Mary, if you can't get anybody to work with you, here's three guys, here's their names. If 
if you can't get anybody, try Andreas Schultz because he's worked with Long John Baldry and Hans Stamer and some Grammy Award winning artists and uh, Juno Award winners. And he, he would know what to do with your voice, Mary, because mm. some people, they don't know how to produce a person with a, a big, big voice. They're, they want it to be high tones or, you know, clear or whatever. And you don't have that. But what you got is a lot of soul, Mary, in your tone, and um, he'll take it and do really well with the music for you. So I had Andreas, I gave Andreas a call after I was turned down, and um, what ended up happening was he came over um, from Lawnsdale in North Vancouver here, <laughs> and he came into the kitchen and I took my guitar and I dusted it off and I played him a song that I just uh, wrote recently for the Jason Lawrence Medicine Show that I sang live on Jason Lawrence's uh, <laughs> show. I actually had to read it off the paper. I didn't even have it memorized. And that was Grifter. And um, yes. So yes. I had... Um, I had um, Andreas come over and I played Grifter for him and I said, Andreas, I'm not going to be able to play this that great, but it'll give you the gist of what I can do. So he came over and I whipped into Grifter for him and he said, Mary, we can record. I'm going to record you. You deserve to be worked with. You deserve to be heard. And I can do the best I can working with you. And we'll, we'll make something memorable. And that's how we started. Well, I love the song Grifter. I've, I've watched the video and you're there playing the guitar. It's beautiful. Grifter, don't come back. I mean, I don't, I don't sing like you do. You have a beautiful voice. It's very powerful. And, you know, that song, I mean, you know, I like it like the white lightning, but Grifter, I, you know, I'm wondering what the song is about. It, it, like, is it someone leaving or moving away? I'm trying to... <laughs> Um, grifter, grifter is about uh, a person that's a grifter. Mm. They go from town to town, place to place. They usually gamble, sell drugs, do anything they can to live off of other people. Grifter is about a grifter that goes into somebody's town and he takes their daughter mm. and he leaves town with their little daughter and they, they go after him. And they, they get their daughter back. Yes. You know? You're like, yeah, like the where you hijacked her heart. And yeah, it's, it's, I just love it. I, I like the, the whole video and, and on Facebook, you're making of the video. Is that right? You were on location? <laughs> well, I, I've been making a bunch of videos actually through uh, John Holbrook, mm -hmm. who has, um, three songs on my CD and John is a director and he's 74 years old mm -hmm. and he is a great songwriter and so I sang his songs uh, 29 years ago 30 years ago and uh, I could never forget his songs so I recorded them now mm -hmm. and uh, so John has been making some uh, videos for me and uh, Dale Shippam he uh, ship him. He uh, made uh, a video for me, another grifter. So I have two grifter videos, yeah, and cool. they're they they were fun to make. And I just dress myself, and you yeah. know, I do whatever with my hair. I'm old, so it's not like you know I'm going to no, be running not. around with a beauty squad or anything. No, you're not. <laughs> you're you are. <laughs> <laughs> you are inspirational. You are a testimonial that, you know, for others who, who, you know, believe in something, keep going like, and I want to congratulate you on your album, White Lightning. And I, I, I you know, tell us, you know, the process in making the album. 
Well, for making the album, every time I would put down a song and get to hear of these tracks that were coming back, um, because I'd go to Andreas with a basic little um, acoustic version of the song, something very simple. And Andreas would get in there and uh, move the song around, uh, change things around in the song, and he would uh, put the tracks down for it. And he knows all the musicians and got them on there. And the musicians that worked on this were Norm Fisher on the bass, Daryl Havers on the keyboard, Hammond organ and the accordion. There was Andreas Schultz on the electric guitars, acoustic and the programming. Mm. And um, Pat Stewart on the drums, Gord Maxwell on the background vocals, and Finn Menashe on the cello on Robin Song and Heather Smiles with Face of Reality. And then Chas Williams, Matt Kelly, and jo John Holbrook, uh, he did the harmonica part. Matt Kelly did the steel pedal guitar on Grifter and Remembering. Mm -hmm. And Chas Williams, he did that dobro on White Lightning. Wow. Well, and it, it, are there 13 songs on? Yes, there okay. is. And I did one cover soon song, I mean, I'm sorry, which was I Don't Want to uh, Set the World on Fire, mm, yeah. um, which is um, one of my husband's favorite songs um, that I really loved singing. And I just, I, I, I would sing it for my husband and he'd say, oh, Mary, I just love the way you sing that song. So I did it more like... Um, uh, old-fashioned style, country style, more than jazz style. Mm -hmm. What has been the feedback been like on your album? Well, this time, it's non-stop. Mm. Um, this time, I have gotten recognition for my vocal abilities right now. And... Um, I'm very, I'm very happy about it because I really didn't expect anything. I really didn't because my first one with Doug, first stone didn't really go anywhere. I'm going to re-record some of those songs coming up. Mm. And uh, but this time I've been getting some great feedback. Uh, just before I talked to you, the Vancouver Sun called me. Nice. And uh, so. I, I've been getting great feedback from this uh, music, but a lot of it, believe it or not, is the way you get produced. Mm -hmm. I was very fortunate to get Andreas Schultz because Andreas is a genius and he knows uh, what to do with my music. I can throw him a little acoustic song and he makes it listenable. So if you listen to the tracks, that's all Andreas. Wow. And his work, his work um, is wonderful with me. And so what a vocalist like anyone needs, anyone need that is a singer, they need a good producer. Hmm. Because without that, you're not going anywhere, you know. And he doesn't overplay on stuff. So what he does is, is magnificent. Well, no, it's wonderful, Mary. No, I really enjoyed our interview, and I love to interview you again, if I may, in the future. I would adore it. Yes, I would adore that anytime you want. Email me, darling, and also I would like you to send me your mailing address so that I can send you a wise woman's cookery book. Oh, and uh, some earrings. I make jewelry. Oh, you do. So I would like to send you earrings. Do you wear earrings? Yes, but we never talked. Well, then <laughs> I gum, I'll send you a package, and I would love you to wear my earrings. My earrings are small. They're good for every day, and uh, they're sterling silver. And a lot of it is carved in silver that are all hand carved, like hearts. And oh my goodness! Beautiful little pieces that uh, women love to wear. So oh. I would like to send you a package. So send me after this. Send me um, your email address or your mailing snail mail, yeah. and I'll send you a package. Okay, because I'm I'm sending out a package. So I'll pu I'll put together a package for you. Okay. Yes, and on one condition that I can promote it on social media. Is that okay? 
I'll send you a wise woman's cookery book and you can <laughs> see what you think about that. You can go to our site yes. and steal some stuff off there. Okay. And I've got a YouTube a YouTube uh, channel too for wise woman's cookery. Oh my goodness. Food, wise woman's cookery, food, sex, magic and merriment yeah. <laughs> that I I wrote and promoted with Shannon Lober. So I'll send you oh. a book. And I'll send you some jewelry and uh, just wear the jewelry. Get some yeah. joy out of life, okay? I will, Mary. And, and you know, just to, um, you know, uh, you might be interested in doing a Q&A with me for print on, you know, your other <laughs> exciting roles you do, you know. I would love to do that. So, um, well, yeah. yes, um, get in touch with me okay. when you want to do that. And I would love to do that with you. Oh, I thank you so much for your time, Mary. And I'll be in touch for sure. And I'll send you my mailing address. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, okay. Bye for now, Mary.